Hello everybody and welcome to Favourite Cricket on Forever Sports and the first match of the SA20 has come to an end in my Cape Town. They've got themselves off to the perfect start beating uh, Power Wars by 8 wickets with 27 balls remaining. A hammering, a hammering. Matt, what was your thoughts just very quickly before you dive into the match? Overall thoughts, first couple of other things that come to mind about that, uh, that fixture we saw down in Cape Town. Look, I think you, you summed it up when you said a hammering. Mm. It really was. It was... It was a men against boys kind of a game. It, 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 with all due respect to Paul Royals, you know they, I think they they tried a thing or two. They brought on Bian Little. They, they you know they they did some interesting things to try and shuffle it up. But they were always on the back foot. They were playing at Newlands, a packed house. We saw only blue, only blue there. It was it was a fantastic win for 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 MI Cape Town. I can't say too unexpected, but it was it it, it was great to see, and I think. It was an excellent advertisement for cricket. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing is, as you said, if, if that's what we can expect from this tournament, then we're in for a big tournament. Mm. And for me, what I think MIK told me so happy about it is just the all-round performance. You know, it wasn't a, a, a sensational bowling or a sensational batting performance that really sort of won for them. It was a very much a, a, a well-balanced performance. Uh, you know, to limit power always to 142 for seven. Uh, we look at you know, look at that scorecard, drop for Archer, uh, bowling four overs. Three for twenty-seven. I mean, that, I mean that's excellent. That, yeah, under seven and over. Uh, so I mean, drop drop for Archer at its best. You know, you've got. Uh, I mean, for example, from someone like Dwayne Janssen there. You know, three overs, one for sixteen is really good to see. An economy of below six for him. Uh, for the Royals, not too many people. I mean, we saw Josh Butler, Dave Miller uh, contributing the, the the bulk of the runs there. Butler with a fifty-one of forty-two, Miller with forty-two of thirty-one. A bit of a cameo from Owen Morgan, but at the end of the day. Just, just not enough from the likes of a uh, Bian Lover, Jason Roy, Dan Vilas, um, and I think Paul Roy just, you know, once they they were well set in a good position, but a couple of those those wickets to Josh Butler really just sort of put the brakes on them. Yeah, they just they didn't feel like they settled with the bats in hand, which was a bit of an issue for them. I think they, you know, there's no doubting the talent. You can't tell me that 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 you know the likes of a uh, of, of Josh Butler, but Jason Roy, even Dan Vilas, and certainly as we know. Dave Miller, Owen Morgan, even can they, they can club a long ball, so it's not that there's a lack of batting talent from Paul Royal. It's just they just didn't get in tonight. Mm. Maybe I get the feeling they were a little bit overawed by the occasion. Um, maybe they weren't expecting quite the vociferous support that they were, you know, that that MI Cape Town received in 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 front of the Newlands crowd. Maybe they they were overawed by the big names in the MI Cape Town lineup. But they just they didn't feel settled. They didn't get in, and that that that, that was the issue. They their top order was really what let them down at the end of the day. I yeah, think. and I think complete opposite for Emma Cape Town. You know, they're going out chasing 143. It's not a massive ask, but you know, chases are you know scoreboard pressure, scoreboard pressure at the end of the day. When you go out and you got runs on the board, you know, you're always you kind of got a slight upper hand. But you know, Dale Brevis, uh, you know, phenomenal innings from him. Uh, Ryan Rickleton, 42 of 33, a strike rate of 127, was the perfect foil. I mean, he really, he went out quite aggressively quite early, which meant that Brevis, who first sort of six, seven balls, you know, was, was struggling to get going, and then he opened it up with a phenomenal um, six, and that kind of just unleashed the shackles. He finished on 70 or 41, hitting four fours, five sixes, a strike rate of 170. Ryan Rickleton, 42 of 33, Sam Cameron with a cameo of 20 of 16, Russ Brenner Dustin coming in, hitting an eight of three. But let's just talk about Dear Brevis, a special, special young cricketer. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this is a tournament that's going to get a lot of international viewers, both across television and, and across this channel. And I think this is a wonderful introduction to Dear Brevis mm. for, 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 for all of our viewers in that it's he is a young, special, very, very special talent that is going to go far. We have no doubt about that. We've seen we've seen YouTube comments. We've seen the lot calling for this man to be to, to be to be brought up into the T20 squad we know South African cricket is in absolute turmoil and we only had to watch that embarrassment of a, of a test series recently and even then I mean the shorter formats have not been anything close to ideal devil Brevis without wanting to put unnecessary pressure on the young lad's shoulders does look like something that we can really kind of hope for in the future and not even the future when i say the future i mean the next series yeah future. i think i think at the end of the day we keep talking about hawazni and the protest setup and i think this tournament will be the final the final hurdle for him i think mm. he comes to the tournament like he does like that and he he could be he could go into the world cup at the end of the year if we qualify 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just 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 looked at a different a different gravy out there. You know, really some phenomenal shots, some really good creative shots. Um, again, well supported by Ryan Rickleton and uh, Sam Curran. Interesting to see Sam Curran coming ahead of us. I'm just not sure we'll see that regularly. Uh, but look at the bowlers though for MIK for um, for for, for, for Paul Royals. Expensive at the end of the day. Cody Yusuf, uh, three overs, one for 33, an economy of 11. Ramon Simmons going for over 10 and over. Therese Shamsi going for over 10 and over, not picking up a wicket. Uh, Bjorn Fontaine, the only person going for less than seven and over. I don't think any bowlers today really will go to bed tonight thinking that they did their, their stocks a lot of good. No, absolutely not. I think, again, let's temper that with the quality of batting lineup. Yeah. I think we, we need, we, we can't, you know, let that go. You have to kind of look look at the two together. But as you say, I mean, a, a player of, of the quality of Tabray Shams, we know, we've seen his short format stats over the last few years. He's been one of the best bowlers in the world over short formats, T20 specifically. For him to have gone 0 for 31 or 3, that's that's just a poor night at the office. Yeah. And I don't care if you're facing Devil Brevis. I don't care... If you if 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 you're bowling to to a Ryan Rickleton who's in the form of his life, the reality is they were not good enough. Just as the batting was not good enough yeah. from from Paul Reels, which leads me to kind of worry for them. Yeah, I think the frustrating thing is that you know you look at at, at someone like Tabray Shamsi and he was the premier bowler in that lineup. You know, number 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 one T Twenty bowler in the world for a while. They brought him on and wanting to, and needing to something to happen. It just didn't really happen. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, I think you know they are going to look at the fact that you know just two wickets across there, taking wickets is an issue. But I think the economy as well, there were just not too many players there who looked like they could drive an end. So a lot, I think far more questions than answers really for Paul Royals. For for MI Cape Town, I, I think the coaching review will be quite straightforward. I mean, I don't think too many um too many issues from them. Yeah, I don't I don't think as issues. you were lads. Yeah, mm. basically, you know, like you look even if you look at the bowling lineup there, the most expensive bowler was George Lindsay Bowl, two overs um, for seventeen, went for eight point five that he would have made him the third most economical bowler for the power rules. So all their bowlers, uh, Sam Curran, uh, looked pretty good apart from one over. He got taken off. But Oli Stone, but, uh, really, really good hit from him. Uh, four overs, two for 31. Uh, a couple of important wickets for him as well. So, yeah, the Rashid Khan on the side can be very chuffed with what, what they did. And I think very much, whilst they've got, arguably got the favourites tag for the tournament, I think lived up to their expert, the hype this evening mm. and very much put themselves at the top and said, we don't actually mind the pressure. We're happy to be called the favourites. And here's the performance to back it up. Yeah. You know what? I was just looking at it now. And I was thinking it's quite interesting. If you look at the, I don't know, I want to say top five or six standout players across the match. It's interesting that you'll, I mean, with the bowling, you'll, you'll have to say Ollie Stone and Jaffa Archer, of course. Yeah. And then you'll maybe add in, say, a Joss Butler, who who was the only the only Royals player who, who, who crossed the 50 mark. Interesting to see that there were so many... I mean, Sam Curran wasn't bad either. So many international players. Yeah, well, I don't think it's any, it's a mistake in the world. The current T20 champions players were, were up there. You mm. know, the, the English players looked really good today. Rashid Khan looked really good. Uh, Ramon Sam, Simmons looked off it, but uh, they had a couple of nice balls. There's a, there's a player there. It was good to see the star stand up. Mm. Dave Miller as well. You know, big high profile yeah. player. 42 of 31, strike at 135. You know, Dale Brevis, all the hype around him. All Stephen the money. 41. Yeah, all the money. Ryan Rickleton, you know, the domestic the domestic bully who's just taking people apart, jumping on. All the big players and the exciting prospects stood up tonight. You know, I think the players, you know, we, we kind of hope it. And, and they, I mean, I feel like there are tears to, to, to players in this tournament. You know, you've got your international stars, then you've got your, like, domestic stars and mm-hmm. players tear up domestic level. And then you kind of got those domestic players, either they've been around for a while or they're still coming new, but they're not... They, you know, they're good players. They've, they've got some really good innings in them, but they're not superstars. Yeah. And, and none of them really put their hands up. You, you, you talk about it for Risco Evans, Avian Lava, uh, Dan Vilas. None of them oh, really, yeah, there's, you know, there's plenty of names there. putting their hands up and saying, I can be a, I can be a, a game winner, a match winner in this tournament. So there was definitely a gulf in quality between the, you, the, 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 the big sort of prior profile players and, and your more sort of stock standard players. Will we see that throughout the tournament? I hope not, to be honest. I would really like to see a couple of, of the, the local players who have been around really put their hands up um, and 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 outper- I mean, outperform. You know, I'd, I'd like to see like a Malusi supporter, for example, go mm. and pick up quite a few wickets and stuff and, and, and just sort of show that there are, we've got a couple of gems who've been around the block here that can still do a job. Um, and it's not just, you know, it, you know, from terms of this tournament, it's supposed to be our saviour from a financial perspective. I think what I'm really hoping is to see 
some domestic players really stand up and show that we've got, I mean, we've got the most players in the IPL outside of India, mm. you know, so that shows you the quality of South African cricket. And I'm really hoping that a lot of these domestic players who are relatively unknown will, will really put their hand up and, and put themselves in and amongst this task and show that they've got the quality to compete at this highest level. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I have to believe that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's only a, it's only a good thing with this to have, to have like a Dane Villas, for example, he's a, he's a great example of a player who's who's been around. He's been around the the, the, the provincial setup for a, you know for a fair while, but now gets to play with a Jock Archer, gets to play alongside a Joss Butler kind of a thing. I think it will. I think it will. It it definitely has to help South African cricket in the, you know. I don't even want to say the long run because the truth of the matter is South African cricket can't afford the long run right yeah, now. Right. It has to be the short, the, the you know the short, right here, right now kind of a situation. And I think, I think from what we saw, the early signs from SA Twenty have been that this might just have a lot of what we're hoping it will. Yeah, I think I think I took a lot of positives out. I thought the the crowd looked good, the vibe looked good. I'm hearing a lot of good things on Twitter about you know what the atmosphere was like. Really nice performances. Good players, good quality of cricket. Um, I thought that, yeah, the game flowed quite well. There was like there were a lot of stoppages and stuff. Mm. I thought, I thought, just in general, it all went off. I think, I think all the organisers, Graham Smith, will be will go to bed being very happy, going, yeah, we've actually got something here. They want to make this the biggest tournament outside the IPL. This was a good start to that, I think. Yeah, you know, I yeah. think that it it was a game worthy of the hype of the tournament. Tomorrow we're going to see. You know, Joe Super Kings, Durban Super Giants, you know, lots of big players in action. Factory to see back on home soil playing tomorrow. Uh, you know, Joe Super, I mean, the Super Kings are one of the biggest franchises and one of the most successful IPL franchises. Can they re, uh, you know, emulate that success in South Africa? Lots of big, cool players on display tomorrow. And hopefully, this is just the start of what's going to be a pretty tremendous tournament. Yeah, I'm hoping so. I think it will be. I think we've got, we've got all the ingredients. And, you know, ingredients are one thing. And you know, global T20 ideas were also ingredients. Mm. But I think from what we've seen tonight, the ingredients might just be cooking up something mm. that is the, that is worth watching. And I, 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 I personally, and, and I'm not just saying this, I, I genuinely am, I'm excited to see what the rest of this tournament has to offer. 100%. We will be live again tomorrow uh, for that match, which is down in uh, Durban. Uh, so you can join us uh, tomorrow uh, live. And uh, for a lot of the matches, we've been doing all the major matches, so so plenty of SA20 action coming your way. And I'll have a preview out in the morning for that match. And so if you're looking at how to watch the match, check out the description, check out our channel as well. I've got guides on how to watch all the action. So don't miss a ball for the SA20. Uh, my name is Stephen Pettit. Uh, thank you very much for, for watching. Thank you, Matt, for, for joining in and jumping on. As always, absolute pleasure. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. And we'll see you guys all very soon.